I, I share the excitement and fear that Urvashi talked about in this exciting new world that we are entering. And I am really grateful to Fiki to have me. I, I think I'm a most inadequate keynote speaker. But ladies, gentlemen, friends, colleagues, thank you for having me and listening to me. Uh, it's really an honor to be here in the second edition of Publicon 2012. Um, it, I, I, I don't have a single word of wisdom to impart because I'm here just like all of you to learn about the digital publishing environment, its emergent contours, and to understand how, as writers, as publishers, uh, we should prepare to navigate these new territories. The publishing industry in India, unlike the rest of the world, is on a growth curve. It's doing well. But is it doing well because it doesn't know what is coming? Or does it, is it doing well because we are prepared for what is coming? Um, as usual in India, nobody quite knows the answer. But um, all the things that um, the previous speakers have talked about help us just uh, to uh, prepare for the challenges of uh, the new technologies that are overtaking the established publishing scene. Uh, what I feel, what I see, what I observe is that the human imagination itself, the nature of the human imagination has changed. And I see this in the young children who um, I have a little granddaughter and at one year old she responds to the screen, to the iPad screen in a way that's really quite unexpected. She understands it. She, she knows how to use it. And so uh, somewhere the human mind is changing from a linear and an analog model to a, a simultaneous 360 degree surround sound model. It's, it's different how we think, how we react. Um, there was a famous visionary called Marshall McLuhan who wrote in 1964, a long time before all these new technologies were a glimmer and a blip in the horizon. He wrote saying, the book is an extension of the eye. Electrical circuitry is an extension of the central nervous system. And how right he was that the collective evolution of how we think as human beings is moving in those directions. Every change in human technology is actually a change in human consciousness. It's, it changes the way we are and the way we think and the way we react and the way we understand. Um, if uh, McLuhan was alive today, he would say the screen is an extension of the eye. The touch screen is an extension of the mind. And that's just for today. For tomorrow, it may be the air screen. And it, it could be, but, but the nature of thought, the sanctity of an idea, the collective uh, reactions to each other's stories and narratives, these things are unchanging. So while technology is changing, and the human mind is changing with it, and the human imagination is changing, but there are some things, which is our personal narratives, and our larger national narratives, and our human narratives, these, these change, but they also don't change. Now I've come here as a writer, as a publisher, Mm, and uh, I also, I mean, because of the Jaipur Literature Festival, which has, uh, by, uh, with which uh, Urvashi is also associated as an advisor, and which many of you have been to. And those of you who've been to that festival, you know that it is actually a symptom of the hunger in India for books, for ideas, for uh, collaborative thinking for creative open spaces. So there is this hunger in our largest democracy in the world to, to just think and react. And the new technologies do give us the space. But if we don't understand them and how to use them, uh, it'll just be a missed opportunity and a dysfunctional kind of a um, encounter. Uh, as far as uh, Indian literature abroad goes, um, that's something which is really in its initial sp stages, and I'm afraid even to talk about it, because it's a very difficult task. Uh, as a multilingual, um, multivocal country, we have 22 scheduled languages and thousands of mother tongues, mother uh, uh, dialects. For all these to be translated into other languages to be visible to each other and to the world, it's such a challenge that I, I do hope we get somewhere. But Again there, technology and the digital platforms are key to it, because not only to showcase them, but even for the act of translation, because the act of translation has become and will become more and more easier with uh, online resources and with uh, 
well, not just digital tr translations, but with the aid that it gives, mm, especially literary translations. So um, I'm, I'm intimidated uh, by what is happening before us. And uh, I mentioned this excitement and fear, which many of you share. Maybe some of you have more excitement, and maybe some of you have more fear. But I, like many of you, I'm both a technophobe and a technophile. In that, I love and I admire technology, and I know it's like magic and it can change our lives. But personally, I'm clumsy and illiterate with it, and what is called a techno peasant. So it's it's really uh, many of us fit into one or two of these categories. Um, my first novel was written on an electric typewriter in 1982, and people, my friends used to envy me because they still had the uh, manual typewriters, and I had this correction strip where I could actually just put a, it would sort of autocorrect. But I can assure you it was an extremely tedious process. And an author's imagination and access to information is set radically free by the computer and the internet. Though along with this new radical freedom is also sometimes a lack of responsibility. Um, our changing media ecology has radically reversed the linear, the static demarcation of functions that were imposed by hardware defined typographic publishing after the Gutenberg Press, and it, it was all linear thinking, linear publishing. But it's changed, and in the age of ever-evolving software and real-time technology, the publisher's job becomes to curate content and to outreach content. And uh, it's a completely different set of challenges, but again, the same. Um, I think it's um, very important for all of us as Indians, to remember that we are transiting from a closed and a very Brahmanical and a very lock and key attitude to knowledge and passing on to knowledge, uh, and to a democratic knowledge society with things like the RTI in place. Uh, it, it's, it's a completely different thing we are moving to. And naturally, there are growing pains here. But these transformations are all fueled by digital media. And uh, they'll carry a long-term impact on the nature of um, society and thinking. And India is very much part of this experiment. Uh, these excellent sessions that Publicon is present, presenting include emerging content platforms, publishing industry and the amended copyright bill, monetizing content and also managing distribution in a digital age and also a very important session on digital content for classrooms. These themes uh, comprehensively cover many of the questions which both writers and publishers are seeking answers to. Um, uh, E.M. Foster, old-fashioned E.M. Foster in aspects of the novel, um, he wrote, Only Connect. And if Foster was alive today, he might have rephrased that mantra for our times as connect and share. I'm confident that this forum will help us connect and share to new opportunities in digital publishing and to reimagining the future and retooling, rethinking uh, how we learn and how we talk to each other. The papers and sessions will be an invaluable opener to the brave new world, uh, which will be an age of individual and collective creativity. And these are not big words. All of you as stakeholders in the publishing industry can make them happen. And, and so I'm delighted to be here on this opening day. And thank you all for listening patiently.